All right, everybody, to kick off this panda series, I got to talk about, well, series. A series is a panda's one-dimensional labeled array. Think of it like a single column in a spreadsheet. It's one-dimensional. A good analogy would be a single hallway with apartments. Each apartment holds some data. Each apartment also has some sort of label or number. A series is a one-dimensional labeled array. Here's how we can create one. We'll start with the Python list. Let's say we have some data. Then we'll add a few numbers. 100, 102, 104. I can convert this list to be a series. Here's how. I will create a series object equals axis pandas spd call the series constructor. Now this is a constructor, not a function. The s is uppercase. As an argument, we will pass in our data. And then if I were to print my series object, here's what it would say. There's a couple things going on here. All of our data is arranged in a single column, 100, 102, 104. The left-hand side has an index. The index has labels starting with 0, 0, 1, 2. And on the bottom, we have metadata about this series. The data type of what we're storing are 64-bit integers, 100, 102, 104. If we were to change the data type, the metadata is going to change too. I'll add some decimal portions, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And let's see what changes. Now the data type is 64-bit floating point numbers. Or we could use letters or strings. A, B, C. Now the data type of what we're storing are objects or even booleans, true, false, true. The data type of this series is bool, meaning boolean, true or false. But let's change these back to be numbers, 100, 102, 104. Now when you construct a series object, you can set an index with custom labels. The default behavior for each label is to start at zero and increment by one, but we can pass in something custom. This will be another argument within our series constructor. We'll pass in a keyword argument for readability. Index equals, we can pass in a list, a tuple, a dictionary, a numpy array, or even another series. To keep it simple, let's set the first label to be A, then B, then C. Here we go. Here are the new labels. With our index, we have new labels, A, B, C. But the values are still the same, 100, 102, 104. You could get creative with your labels. For example, going back to our apartment analogy, let's say apartment number one, then apartment number two, then apartment number three. We have apartment one is 100, Apartment number two is 102. Apartment number three is 104. We'll change that back. If at any time you need to access a value directly within a series, you'll take your series, access the lock property. Lock means location by label, but people just say lock. Use the subscript operator, which is a set of straight brackets. Then you will select a label. For example, A. Return the value where the label is A. This will return a value whatever is at this label. A is 100. B is 102. C is 104. If there's a label that doesn't exist, like D, we get a key error. Let's change that back. To update one of these values, we'll have to access that lock property. Take our series, access the lock property within the subscript operator, locate the value at label C. Then let's set this to be 200. Then we will print our series. C is now 200. So to print or access a value, 
you access the lock property. We're locating a value by label. Now you can also locate by integer position. That's I lock. Series dot the letter I lock. If I need the first value, the integer location is going to be zero. That returns 100, one is 102, and two is 104. It's pretty similar to accessing an array in other programming languages. So you got I lock for integer location or lock location by label. Okay, now we're going to filter by value. We'll need a few more values. Let's say we have 200 and 202. We'll need a few more labels though. Currently there's a mismatch. Value error, length of values five does not match the length of index three. We'll add a few more. We have A, B, C, D, E. There we go. Let's filter by values. We will return any values that are 200 or greater. Here's how. Take our series, use the subscript operator, and here we'll write a condition. Return any values within our series that are greater than or equal to 200. This will print the label of D has a value of 200, the label of E has a value of 202. Let's switch this to be less than 200. A is 100, B is 102, C is 104. All right, here's a more complex example. Rather than using a Python list for this next example, we'll be using a dictionary. As you guys might know, I really like pizza. And well, I need to go on a diet because I've eaten too much pizza. I'm going to use a Python dictionary to record how many calories I've eaten per day. I'll create a dictionary. We'll name it calories. Calories equals a Python dictionary. A dictionary is made of key value pairs. For the key of day one, for the value within this key value pair, I'll set this to be 1,750, meaning 1,750 calories. I'm trying to eat less than 2,000 calories per day. If you would like, feel free to pick different numbers. For day two, I didn't stick to my diet on day two. I had 2,100 calories. Then for day three, I had 1,700 calories. Now to create a series again, we will type series equals axis pandas as PD, call the series constructor, then pass in our dictionary. Since our dictionary is made of key value pairs, we'll use the keys as the labels. So you don't need to pass in an index like this. If we were to print our series, here's the output. This single column represents the calories I've eaten each day. And on the left-hand side is each label for this column. We have day one, day two, day three. Let's access the lock property to see how many calories I've eaten on a certain day. Day one, 1,750. Day two, 2,100. Day three, 1,700. Now let's update day three. Perhaps I cheated on my diet and I had a cookie. Well, to update a value, we'll access our series, access the lock property, we're locating by label. At the label of day three, we'll add 500 calories. We'll say plus equals 500 to add 500. Now on day three, the total amount of calories I've eaten is 2,200. If I were to print my series, Here's what my chart looks like. 1,750, 2,100, 2,200. Let's delete this line of code. Now we'll filter by value. Let's find any days where I've eaten more than 2,000 calories. Which days have I not followed my diet plan? We'll access our series, use the subscript operator, return any values within our series that's greater than 2,000. 
we'll say greater than or equal to 2,000. All right, on day two, I did not stick to my diet. I had 2,100 calories. Now, on which days did I stick to my diet? Return any values within my series that are under 2,000. There are two days which I followed my diet where the calories is under 2,000. Day one and day three. All right, everybody, that's a series. It's a pandas one-dimensional labeled array. Think of it like a single column in a spreadsheet. Now your homework is to post a series in the comment section down below. If you can, try and think of a unique example. All right, everybody, and those are series using pandas.